Welcome fabricators. Passing multiple variables from a notebook to a data pipeline? Oh yeah, that's what we're doing today on Tales from the Field. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Okay, so I'm just gonna get straight to it. Last time I was with you, I did a video, how to pass parameters from notebooks to pipelines in Microsoft Fabric. Well, this is part two of that video. So I'm gonna pick up directly where it left off. There's a link down in the description of the video and here's an image that you can take a look at to be able to see what I'm talking about when it comes to the video. So take a look at that video. If you haven't watched it, I'll be here. I'll wait for you. Go ahead and watch it, come back. Click on pause because we're going to pick up directly from where we finished off from that video. Let's go ahead and get to that great content right now. All right, so I'm in my fabric workspace and I'm going to look at my right parameters notebook and you can see what we've got there for writing to the lake house. And now I'm going to add it my pass parameters. We passed one variable last time. Now I want to pass two. So let's look at how we're going to do this to pass it from this notebook back to the pipeline. First, I'm gonna create the new variable. I wanna pass the number that I'm gonna increment and the text. So I'm creating my number as a variable and I'm setting it to two. Now I also need to make my output variable. We're gonna do this as a JSON value. So I'm gonna create a variable called JSON result and then I'm gonna create a JSON document. The first key value pair is my ID and the my num variable. And the second is a message. This is gonna be the name of what we're passing in variable one. Now I need to output this as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to a string and then I'm going to pass the JSON result because it has to be a string value that we're passing as the output. Now that this is done, I can come over to my notebook and I can start to edit this to accept multiple parameters. Remember, first thing we need to do, we're going to go and edit this. I'm going to do this in order, uh, the insert on the table. So I'm going to create a new variable named my ID. It's going to be an integer value. I'm going to click confirm, and then we're going to edit this formula. This is what we previously had in place, but now I need to get the JSON values. So how do I do that? Well, first we're going to add a JSON syntax to this. So I'm going to say JSON. I'm going to put my brackets around the parameter from the notebook and the exit value. I'm going to say my ID because that's the key value pair that we set up. Now, I also need this to be an integer value. This is going to pass a string. So I'm going to put int in place and I'm going to close those brackets. Uh, it didn't look quite right to me with the little yellow squiggly line. So as you can see, I click on it um, and I double check that it's int. Yep, looks like my function is correct. It erased the J in a bracket. So we're just going to pop that back in. This is the syntax we want to be able to get this value out, to get a number. I click OK and my first variable is almost complete. Now I need to change the name because I want it to be exactly what it is. So we're just going to change this to var my ID. That's going to be my variable. I'm going to delete the on success condition to the right notebook because I'm going to add another variable. So let's go ahead and go up to activities and I'm going to get the set variable task. We're going to add another one. I'm going to add the new on success condition from my set variable to my new set variable and from that second one to the right to table. Now I'm going to go in here. Let's go ahead and name this exactly what it is. Uh, and this is the var message value. I'm going to go to settings. We've already created a string variable, so I can just utilize that. And I'm going to go in here and we'll construct this from, from scratch. Now, because it's a string, I can just start out by saying at JSON. And then I'm going to get the parameter from notebook.output. Now, remember, what do we got to do to get that exit value? We have to say result.exit value. And then I can go to the JSON and say dot message. Now, I could have picked a different name for this. It's a little complicated. There's an uppercase message, which is a JSON object. There's a lowercase message, which is the value that we put in place. I need to do one other thing. I need to go to write to table and I need to create a variable. Now, remember, we've already got the value in there. And this is the new number variable that we've set in the notebook that we're writing to our lake house. It's an integer value. And I need to just go over to the variables tab far off in the right and click my ID. Super easy this one, no crazy formula that we need for this. I'm ready to run this. Now I've sped this up through the magic of automation to make sure that we can get this. So you don't have to wait and watch this go for the entire thing. But what are we doing? We've got our first notebook where we're passing parameter values out. We're setting two variable IDs 
And then what we're doing is we're taking those variable IDs, we're passing it to our third notebook, where we're writing both of those values to our tables. Now, if this is successful, I'm going to get the same message string, but our my ID in the field is going to be the numeral two that we specified. So how do I pass out multiple values? Well, I can make a much bigger JSON document if I need to, to be able to pull these values out. I come and I refresh my table, select star from output parameter info. And when this returns, hopefully we've got two rows in place on our table. There's that fabric magic. Take a look at that. My ID2 and original text pass parameters from pipelines to notebooks. Now, one of the questions I got on the previous video is, where does this apply? Where am I going to use this in my architecture? Well, it's entirely possible that maybe you're passing this to a stored proc. Maybe you're passing this to another notebook to be able to take some additional data uh, and be able to utilize it. Maybe you're doing cross workspace activities if you're going from bronze to silver or silver into gold. There's a lot of possibilities. One of the key things to realize is not only can we get one value out, but we can get multiple values out. And we can even get them out in a JSON document format as long as we're passing that value out as a string. Well, I hope this has been helpful for you. You know where we want to keep this going, down in the comments. Sound off. Uh, any questions about this? Is this helpful? It, are you using this in production? I'd love to hear a scenario and the way that you're actually using this in your environment. Thank you so much for joining us on Tales from the Field. As always, be good to one another out there. Bye, everybody. Mistake, it's called education. I try to do this every day. Call it replication. Wake up.